Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, so thermal strain imaging, or TSI, relies on the temperature dependence of the, speed, of the speed of sound. In water, which is the primary constituent of many biological materials, the sound speed increases with increasing temperature, as is shown here in the blue line. In contrast, uh, in castor oil, the sound speed decreases with increasing temperature. And this is a trend which mim mimics many biological lipids. The goal of TSI is then to image this compositional contrast. And the way we do this is with the pulse sequence of imaging, heating, and then imaging again. And so what we do is we compare the pre and post heating frames to measure the shifts. And then we can, we can identify lipid or water-based tissues. And in particular, we're interested in doing this in atherosclerosis. The heating is typically ultrasound mediated with a temperature rise less than two degrees Celsius. And in general, these physics are similar in principle to non-invasive thermometry. So to further illustrate this, starting on the image to the left, we have a lipid-based inclusion and a water-based background. The black dotted lines show the heated area. And if you look closely at the middle figure, what you'll see is that during the heating process, the lipid inclusion actually tends to stretch out. And this stretching is actually a result of a decrease in sound speed and not because of mechanical expansion. By tracking these shifts and then calculating the strain, we can then create a strain map in which positive red strain corresponds to lipid-based regions, and negative blue strain corresponds to water-based regions. And so the governing equation for TSI is that the measured strain is equal to minus the sound speed coefficient times the temperature change. The sound speed coefficient is the percentage change in sound speed per degree Celsius. Now, previous studies for TSI did not explicitly address clutter, which is typically a prominent artifact in vivo, and presents as a diffuse haze which degrades B-mode image contrast. What Doherty et al. showed previously was that clutter also degrades the tracking performance for radiation force induced mechanical displacements. They also showed that pulse inversion tracking could be used to improve displacement estimates in the presence of clutter. Song et al. went on to combine shear wave imaging with pulse inversion tracking in order to provide more robust shear wave speed estimates. And so what we hypothesized was that pulse inversion tracking could also be used to improve the estimation of the apparent strains generated during TSI. So we did our work on a Verisonics Vantage system with an external HIFU power supply, driving an ATL L74 transducer with a 3.3 to 6.6 .6 megahertz bandwidth. The sequence was as previously described, imaging, then heating, then imaging again. In particular, the imaging sequence utilized 33 lateral lines. At each lateral line, there were four transmit-received pairs. The first transmit-received pair utilized a 3.3 megahertz transmit. The second pair utilized a phase inverted 3.3 megahertz transmit. And the final two utilized in phase 6.6 .6 megahertz transmits. Heating was done using a multi foci lateral approach, which was previously described. And this allowed us to perform imaging and heating with the same L74 transducer. So the heating beam shown here was driven at a 5% duty cycle over two seconds, which resulted in the temperature rise of 0 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius. So RF data was safe for offline beam forming, and 3.3 megahertz data was then the difference between the two 3.3 megahertz phase inverted signals. The 6.6 .6 megahertz data was equal to the sum of the two in phase 6.6 .6 megahertz signals. And finally, the pulse inversion data was the sum of the two phase inverted 3.3 megahertz signals. We used Lupus's estimator to track displacement with a 1.5 wavelength kernel. The displacement was then median filtered, and strain was estimated using a first order Svitsky Gole filter with a two millimeter kernel for any quantitative analyses that I'll show, and a three millimeter kernel for any images that I'm displaying. So, we were interested in assessing the tracking performance over a range of sound speed coefficients. So, we created castor oil and gels and phantoms with castor oil percentages ranging from zero to 50%. We imaged these phantoms with and without two layers of clutter at five spatial locations per phantom for a total of 60 ultrasound acquisitions. And the, and the clutter was introduced artificially by placing layers of copper mesh between the transducer face and the phantom itself. The signal to noise ratio was measured as the absolute value of the mean strain divided by the standard deviation of the strain within the image area corresponding to the 6 dB heating beam width. A one-tailed pair of t-tests was used to, used to evaluate significant differences. So what we have here is the signal to noise ratio on the y-axis versus the castor oil percentage. In blue, we have the 3.3 megahertz TSI data. In red, the 6.6 .6 megahertz data. And in black, the pulse inversion data. 
And what we observed for castor oil percentages from 0 to 40 percent was that the signal to noise ratio for the pulse inversion tracking was better than the fundamental tracking. Uh, when compared to 6.6 .6 megahertz, there was a 36.4 percent improvement. And when compared to 3.3 .3 megahertz, there was 145 percent improvement. We introduced clutter, shown here in the black dotted lines. And what we found was that there was a degradation in SNR for all tracking modes. However, the relative degradation was smallest for pulse inversion tracking. And as a result, the actual SNR advantage grew to 52.1% for 6.6 .6 megahertz compared to the pulse inversion, and 213% for 3.3 .3 megahertz compared to pulse inversion. Next, we were interested in assessing a nice control biological tissue. So we used liposuction fat obtained with IRB approval, and we generated a two-layer phantom seen here. The top layer is gelatin, and then the bottom layer is liposuction fat. We image this phantom through zero, two, and four layers of clutter at five spatial locations. And then we quantify the TSI data with three metrics. The first was contrast to noise ratio. And we define the lipid region as the red dotted region shown here corresponding to the liposuction fat, the water region as the blue dotted region corresponding to the gelatin background. And in addition, we also looked at the true positive area as the area within the red dotted region uh, with, strain, with positive strain greater than 0.1% divided by the total area of the red dotted region. We looked at the false positive area and we measured that as the area within the blue dotted region with positive strain greater than 0.1% divided by the total area of the blue dotted area. So shown here from left to right, we have 3.3, 6.6, and pulse inversion data. And the first row images is B mode and the second row is the TSI data. And what we can see is that the, po there is positive strain within the liposuction fat, which is what we would expect from a lipid-based tissue. In addition, if you look closely in the, negative, in the gelatin background, you can see that there is negative strain corresponding to what we would expect from a water-based material. With the introduction of clutter, what we observed were two things. The first was that there was a decrease in the strain magnitude. And based off of data not shown here, we found that this decrease is mostly due to attenuation of the heating beam from clutter and not due to strain underestimation errors. The second was that there was a decrease in image quality. And we quantified this with contrast to noise ratio. And going from left to right, we have zero, two, and then four layers of clutter. What we found was that there was a degradation for all tracking modes, but pulse inversion had the smallest relative degradation at 35.1% compared to 43.7 and 62.4 for 6.6 .6 and 3.3 .3 megahertz data respectively. Looking at the true positive area and the false positive area, what we found was that with addition of clutter, the true positive area decreased and the false positive area increased. The decrease in true positive area was smallest for pulse inversion tracking at minus 13% as compared to minus 15 to 16% for fundamental tracking. For the false positive area, pulse inversion saw 11% increase compared to a 15 to 70% increase for fundamental tracking. Finally, we were interested in looking at a carotid endarterectomy sample. So this is a surgery performed to treat carotid atherosclerosis. And basically, the surgeon takes out the plaque from the carotid artery and portions of the intimal and medial layers. We obtained our specimen from an asymptomatic 73-year-old female and embedded it in gelatin, imaged it through zero and three layers of clutter. After imaging, we performed oil red O staining for lipids. Shown here are matched B-mode and histology images. And in oil red O histology, uh, lipids stain red. So if we blow up the top part of this artery, we can see that there is dense red staining corresponding to a lipid rich region. Then if we look immediately adjacent into the left of this area, we can see that there's an area with much less red staining corresponding to a predominantly water based region. So I've marked these area in this areas in the B mode image. And then if we look at our corresponding TSI images, we can see that there's rough qualitative agreement between the TSI and the histology. If we look specifically at the dashed regions, we see that in the red dashed region, there's positive strain, corresponding again to what we would expect from a lipid rich region. In the blue dashed region, there's negative strain, corresponding to what we would expect from a water based region. However, with the introduction of clutter, we see that there is significant degradation of image quality. Starting with the image on the bottom left, if we look at the dashed regions again, we now notice that there is positive strain in the blue dashed region, corresponding to a false positive. Looking at the image to the right, the 6.6 .6 megahertz image, we see that there is negative or close to zero strain in the 
red dashed region, corresponding now to a false positive. On the other hand, the pulse inversion tracking matches pretty well with the no clutter case and with the original histology image. So in summary, we looked at mixed castor oil and gelatin phantoms, and we found that pulse inversion tracking improved the signal to noise ratio, um, and that this advantage actually grew with the introduction of clutter. For the liposuction phantom, we found that pulse inversion track TSI maintained the highest contrast to noise ratio, as well as true positive percentage and the lowest false positive percentage. And finally, for the carotid endarterectomy sample, we, looked, we found that pulse inversion track TSI provided the best match with oil red O staining. I'd like to thank everyone from my lab, as well as the Center for Ultrasound Molecular Imaging and Therapeutics and our funding sources. Thank you for your attention.